The use of color is something that I use in my day-to-day -day figure production. I use it all the time to convey messages. You might use it to differentiate between a certain area from another. I'm going to be really vague here. Use color everywhere. But as much as I love making figures and using colors, I am very guilty of making figures that are not very colorblind safe. So the, in more recent times, I've made a conscious effort to do what I can to make my figures as colorblind friendly as possible. In this video, I'll be showing you a three-step process of how you can make your figures more colorblind friendly. It'll start off by using QGIS's inbuilt preview function to understand what your maps would look like to someone with, say, red-green colorblindness. I'll be showing you a website which is able to share a bunch of resources in choosing a color palette that's suitable to colorblind people. And finally, how I can import those color palettes that have been suggested into your QGIS workspace. So without further ado, let's get into it. A couple of videos ago, I made this topography video, how to like make your topography pop. And in that video, I used a really popular color scheme, which ranges from white to kind of a light blue green color. And I really enjoy using this one, but as to its colorblind friendliness, it does use a lot of oranges in reds and greens. And to someone with a red green colorblindness, the kind of visual impact might get washed out a bit. But in this particular map, I have also used kind of textures. So I've used contours and hill shades to be able to convey similar messages. So it's not entirely reliant on color to be able to convey the message. So first off, I'm going to show you QGIS's inbuilt colorblind preview functionality. It's really useful and I use it all the time. If you go down to view, preview mode, here there are a couple of different options. There's grayscale, no red, no green, and no blue. So no red and no green are probably the most common kind of types of colorblindness. No blue and grayscale are probably a little bit more uncommon and rare. But grayscale is really useful if you want to be able to understand what your map would look like if it was printed out in black and white, for example. So here, at least with the use of hill shade and contours, you can kind of see where you could see areas of steepness, etc. But it might be hard to differentiate between low areas and high areas. Following that, there is you know, the no red filter and also the no green filter. And again, similar to before, whilst I mentioned that you know, this color scheme that I picked does kind of wash out a little bit when you preview it using these colorblind modes, uh, the use of the, the contours and hill shed really allows you to differentiate you know, areas of steepness and, and not. So you can tell without it, this map doesn't really give us much, but with them on, it helps us be able to differentiate these things a little bit better. You can see how I applied those in the video uh, link below. Okay, so what can we do to pick a color palette or what resources are there that's available? If we jump up to Google and type in color brewer, this is a fantastic resource that I use all the time. And it's just, I guess, a website that has a whole bunch of different uh, color schemes, you can choose whether it's sequential, diverging, qualitative, and you can preview it in this map here, and you can change your number of you know, data classes, etc. Um, so it's really useful to be able to visualize you know, different color schemes. One option that's really great is this colorblind save option. If we click that, it kind of removes the color schemes that aren't so colorblind friendly, but as a starting point, a lot of their color palettes are already colorblind safe. So I quite like just like a simple ramp up, you know, white to, to brown or white to orange um, works, works well as a colorblind safe option. And then if you go to the diverging options, uh, the, the brown to greens are good. But again, it all comes down to personal taste and preference as to how you want to style your figure. Now, Color Brew is great because it has all these different hex keys that you can copy and paste to get the exact color that you need. So if you were to build some uh, kind of symbology palette from scratch, you can just copy these if you need to. But fortunately, QGIS has these color schemes built in, and I'll show you how to import those in a second. So let's turn off the color blind friendliness node. So let's open the symbology palettes. And here in the color ramp section, 
there'll be the drop down. And similar to how I imported the ArcMap color scheme, uh, let's create a new color ramp. And here in the catalog, there is a color brewer catalog. And if you go there, you'll be able to see all the same kind of spectral colors that we saw in the website earlier. So as I mentioned, I quite liked the kind of white to red um, spectral scheme. You choose a bunch of different colors, hit OK, apply. And just like that, we have a map that's more colorblind friendly than before. So I guess that's pretty much sums everything up. I showed you, I guess, how to check if, you, if your map is colorblind friendly. It does require some interpretation for yourself as to whether the colors you've selected are communicated in the colorblind mode. I've shown you Color Brewer, which enables you to select a whole bunch of different color schemes that are colorblind safe. And finally, I've been able to show you how you pull it to your QGIS workspace. So I hope this video has helped. If you've got any questions or comments about this video today, feel free to leave me in the comment. Feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section below. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.